All right, Chris Golick here again with uh, Famous Poker Series Goliath. Got a very, very honorable guest here. We got the Duke of Fremont Street back. Duke, welcome back. Great to see you. Uh, it's only been about 20 minutes, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you very much, Chris. So we talked to Duke a little while ago. Obviously, he's here for Jacob Zalewski's charity events. Uh, we're going to take this a little bit differently, though, right now. Uh, I've lived in Las Vegas since about 2008. I've heard a lot of things about how Vegas used to be, kind of like a then and now type thing. So I'm just going to open up to Duke here. Give me a Las Vegas then and now. Go. Well, right now, Vegas is it's a challenging place because um, it's corporate, as we all know. Uh, Planet Hollywood is doing it right. It, it still has that old Vegas feel to it. You still have your panache. And my uh, famous saying is never allow anyone to squash your panache. Uh, Planet Hollywood lets you uh, spread your wings. So um, I, it's a privilege to be here for this great cause. And I love your room. And I'll try to make it more often. We certainly appreciate that. And, um, yes, he's known as the Duke of Fremont Street, but I'm changing his name today. One day only. He's the Duke of Planet Hollywood, the Duke of PH. How does that sound? I'm honored. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you. Your name tag's on the way. Your check's in the mail. Oh, well, that part I really like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you've been in Vegas. We talked a little earlier since about late 70s, early 80s approximately? Off and on. Um, I was in, I've been in Vegas three times. And um, I had to go away for a while. Not what you think. Uh, but um, I'm here permanently. This is my adopted home. I've literally been on six continents around the entire globe, wow. and there's no place like Vegas. This is my beloved Las Vegas. Yeah. So let's, let's talk poker a little bit, I guess, the then and now type thing. I asked the same question to Tom McAvoy just a couple days ago. I'm going to give you the same exact question. Back probably mid-'80s, late-'80s, early-'90s, when you wanted to learn about poker, there weren't really as many books. You read, like, Mike Carroll's book of Tells, then you went to a poker table. Nowadays, you have a lot of books. You have digital ways to learn. You have you can study hand histories, on-the-spot blog. I mean, people are now showing live poker that they're playing online and talking about it. So my question to you is, when you're learning how to play poker, do you think there was more of an advantage in the older times, like when you can read a book like Mike Carroll's book of tells, or is all the new ways, what's the best way to learn poker right now, I guess? Well, um, Chris, I'm a dinosaur. I grew up at a different era, a different time. I was a Mississippi Riverboat gambler long before I came to Vegas. I've been playing poker over 40 years. So um, back in the day, we learned by, you know, having a hand hold up, you always had your pistol with you, and you always had your <laughs> bowie knife with you, and you had a better shot at winning the hand. But it was a, One way or the other. Yeah, exactly. But it was a back room affair then. There were no women. Uh, there was no security. It was, it was a different world then, and it was very colorful. And um, I uh, look with fondness all the memories I have from those days. Obviously, you're involved in a lot of other things besides just poker. What are some of your hobbies that you like besides poker? Well, I really don't have any hobbies. I have passions. I um, uh, One of my passions is adventure travel. I'm a world traveler. I'm a treasure hunter. I've uh, explored the darkest parts of Africa, all of South America, all of Central America, a lot of Asia. I've gone into some of the most exotic locations in India. And I've found that there's treasure wherever you go. And some of the treasure is the people you meet. So let, let's keep going with that. Treasure hunter. Are you talking, like you're looking for a buried treasure, you're looking for the pot of gold somewhere? Uh, treasure hunter, what does that mean? Perpetually, yes. Uh, little shiny round things I love. I've always been a collector. I started collecting when I was a wee lad back in Missouri where I was born on the Mississippi. And um, I collect coins. I collect currency. I collect um, exquisite gems. I collect artifacts. I have actually went down to Belize and such for the search for the crystal skull one time so i mean you know where they found one supposedly but so there's treasure like i say wherever you you seek it and um there's a lot of treasure here right now too today absolutely but i, I feel like i'm more of a caretaker for the future generations because so many people pass up on what precious little is left so i'm trying to to um, acquire and pass on a lot of the treasures that i've that i've uh, managed to dig up over the years that's amazing. I mean, that's uh, one of the best responses for a question I think I've ever had in my short time doing this. So that was very exciting just to hear that right there. So we hit Vegas then and now. Where's Vegas going right now? Well, I'm not certain I like everywhere it's going. If I had my way, I would uh, definitely have some direction of Vegas that I don't see where it's, it's going to happen. I would like to see light rail here. I think if you're going to be a world-class city, you you have to have 
uh, you know, a, a transportation system that's uh, very eco-friendly and something desirable to ride. I think that the east side is um, of uh, Fremont Street, which I'm Fremont Street's my you know stomping ground, is going to be developed um, perhaps in one way. I would like to see perhaps another way. Uh, we'll, we'll see. It remains to be seen what's going on with that. So there's so many incredible stories. Uh, how much do you buy in for traditionally for a one-two no limit game? You know what I'm, you know what I'm looking to hear right now, right? Well, I've bought in for up to a couple hundred thousand. Oh, that's another thing about Vegas that it kind of irks me because, like at the World Series right now, you have to have a player's card just to do a cash game, and there's no cash on the table. Well, that is another form of squashing my panache because I'm known for my enormous, ridiculous, ludicrous <laughs> buy-ins. And extremely honest as well. Yes, of course. I'll admit it. So I, I guess um, let's talk about an accomplishment in poker. What would you like to accomplish as a poker player for the game, for yourself? Give me something. Well, I've managed to survive over four decades in the game, and uh, I've seen the changes. And the changes, it's harder for a player to win today. It really is. I, I One of my cars, I, I collect cars also, is a Jaguar XK8 Candy Apple Red Convertible. I won that playing poker, I mean with poker winnings. Today I'm lucky if I can keep gas in it with my poker winnings. It's a it's a tough, tough game. But poker for me is um, it's a billboard. It's a way, like today, to express um, our appreciation for the charities and to donate to these fine causes. So I'm more I'm I'm, I'm leaning more into that direction to the to the uh, charities and the fundraising. Last question, what advice would you have for aspiring poker players? Well, I've been quoted as saying um, think small. In other words, I've bought into a game for 100,000 and I take it down for 500. Most people buy in for 500 and they feel like they're going to take it down for 100,000, and it generally doesn't work out that way. So if you can keep your, um, you know, I, I shoot low. So, and I would say if you keep your aspirations within in reason, more than likely you'll be here in a few years. The attrition rate, as you know, Chris, of poker players is huge. A lot of these uh, poker players don't last more than a few months because their bankroll, they outlive their bankroll. Bankroll management, we hear that so often. So, Duke, just thanks again. I mean, thanks for, I guess, just being you and being such a great ambassador to the city, to downtown Las Vegas. I mean, you come into the place, you make it a thousand times classier just with being here. So thank you so much, man. Chris, thank you for your for your kind comments, and thank you for the interview. We'll see you all here at Planet Hollywood. <laughs> thanks, everybody.